Hello and welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us today as we talk about how to take your sales productivity to the next level. My name is Chad Collette. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Ledgy Partners. We're a Microsoft Dynamics Gold Partner and a Salesforce Silver Partner. Where we help businesses transform their approach to sales, marketing, and customer service by aligning these teams to focus on improving their customers' experience through business processes and technology. Now, before I introduce our presenter for today, I have a couple quick housekeeping items to cover. First, I want to mention that today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand after the live session. All attendees will receive a follow-up email this week with a link to access the presentation on demand. We encourage you to share this with others within your company and in your network. Now, to ensure the best audio quality, we have everyone on listen-only mode. But if you have a question, please submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. We have a really full agenda for today, but if we have time at the end of the presentation, we'll field as many questions as possible. But if we do not get to your question, we'll make sure we follow up after the webinar is complete. Now, let me introduce our presenter for today, Steve Raybrock. Steve is a CRM product consultant and managing consultant with Legend Partners, and he knows how lubricant marketers use CRM really better than anybody I've ever met. Steve manages all of our CRM for oil and gas implementations and really gets to know each and every lubricant marketer very, very well. From coast to coast, he ensures that the CRM our customers purchase and expect is what's delivered. Now, through his years of experience, he's also an expert on how oil and gas distributors can gain the most efficiency and sales productivity through technology like CRM. And today, Steve's going to show you how that's done. Steve, thanks for joining us today. All right. Thanks, Chad. I am going to spend just a few minutes on a couple slides so we know what we're going to talk about today. And then I'm going to spend as much time as I can actually showing you some of the possibilities, some of the things that we've done with CRM. So let's just quickly go through this. Um, I'm going to do this presentation uh, um, from a salesperson perspective, but obviously you can look at this as a manager as well. But I'm just, just so you kind of know the approach I'm taking, I'm kind of sitting here, I'm a salesperson. These are some of the tools I might use as a salesperson using CRM. So one of the big things a salesperson needs to do is be able to keep track of their accounts. What are our customers and prospects doing? Has anybody stopped ordering? What, do I, what did I promise to do for a customer? So I'm gonna show you a lot about what we can do with tracking accounts with a CRM. And then we're going to move into managing those accounts. So now you're tracking them pretty well. How do you manage them? How do you keep track of all the good information about a customer? They're, they're buying trends. Uh, are they going up? Are they going down? How does this customer compare to other customers? Just how we can use a CRM product to help manage your accounts. So now we've tracked them, we're managing them. How can we grow them? So we've got a couple of things that we've added to our oil and gas CRM that uh, our customers love to help them not only track and manage, but, but grow their business. So with that, um, I just want one more slide here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this slide, but just so you know, um, as I'm doing this presentation, I'm, I'm gonna be using our CRM for oil and gas, which is a, it's a finished CRM product. So what we did is we took Microsoft Dynamics CRM and we customized it for your industry. So what we found is so many folks in your shoes were starting with a vanilla CRM and then paying somebody to kind of build it to work for them. And so basically everybody was inventing the same wheel. So we really invented a super powerful polished wheel, if you will, and it's used by many, many marketers, uh, distributors of oil and gas throughout the country. So that's the product you're gonna see. So what you're seeing actually lives and breathes and is used by lots and lots of organizations. So with that, let's flip over to CRM and go through this. So the first thing we talked about was how to track, um, track your accounts. So when I say track accounts, uh, one of the thoughts that comes into mind is, what have I done for an account or a customer or a prospect? or what do I have to do for a customer or prospect? So just a way to manage your book of business, all the promises you've made, all the things that you wanna do so you don't forget, CRM can really help you do that. So as an example, there's this feature called activities. 
So I'll just pull up, I'll just grab an account here. I'll just pull up Bill's Construction. So one of the things that I can do with CRM as I pull up this account is I can go in and I can create an activity, which is, uh, there's a lot of different ways of looking at activities, but one way is a, a way to keep track of the things that you've done for a customer, things that you've, uh, maybe a meeting you had. So I'm on Bill's Construction, I just kind of scroll down to the activity screen, the activity section, and I just hit this little plus sign, and maybe I just had a sales call with Bill. Um, and it and it didn't go very well. Bill's business isn't doing too well. So I could I could maybe just want to track that. So I could go in here and say I had a sales call with Bill. And there's just a little subject area. There's a big uh, section for a description box. There's dates I can enter. So maybe I had that meeting today. And I could go up here and maybe something like you know, met met with Bill discussed sorry i'm just going to worry about my typing later discuss business and maybe it's not going well and i could go in here and just obviously articulate that a little bit more and when i'm all done i could just mark this complete and this would be uh what we would call a closed activity so now i've captured the fact that i had a meeting with bill you know on today's date and that's all going to show up as I do them. Those would show up under closed activities. I would have a list of them. So I could, I could always look back at what's been happening with Bill's construction. So the good news about that from a, from a turnover perspective, let's say a salesperson moves up to be sales manager or you're reallocating accounts. If this account got assigned to somebody else, right, they could pull it up and they would have a history of what's going on. And they would also hopefully have a have a history or not a history but some commitments on what you plan to do with bills construction so the other really exciting thing i really like about these activities is they can be reminders for you for what to do in the future so as an example you know i had a meeting with bill um business isn't good he's probably not going to be doing anything for a while but he said you know check back in three months or maybe he's under contract with another supplier for for two years it doesn't really matter what i want to do is go in and create another activity maybe a task for myself and again i'm not going to spend a lot of time typing because uh time is of the essence here today i have lots to cover but i could put something like you know check in with bill and then down here again in this description articulate a little bit more about you know how things went maybe today or what's going on what i might want to talk to him about and then the, the beauty of this here is i can give it a due date so then i just dump this out maybe three four months and now i wouldn't mark this one complete i would hit save and close and now i have an open activity for bill's construction so Activities are used to keep track of what I've done and keep track of what I'm supposed to do or what I promised to do or what, just a reminder for me, something I want to do um, for this account. We have a fair amount of clients who are using this. They believe in this philosophy and, and so they've challenged us and we've, we've uh, come through for them because the, the last thing I want to share with you is those folks who are I'll call them CRM purists, where they believe that, hey, we need to keep track of this stuff. We've, I'm actually I'm not going to run this, but I'm just going to show you a report that we created that really tells you the significance of this. So we have a report that you can run that I'm just going to make this a little bit wider here. It's report 530 which you can run that and that's going to give you a list of every account in your system and you can you can select just your accounts or you can select all accounts but all of the accounts alter whether they're prospects or customers that either don't have an open activity or I'm not working an opportunity for them so ultimately that report becomes in many of our customers eyes that report is a list of of prospects and customers that have fallen through the cracks right if there isn't anything in crm to tell you to check back in three weeks or three months or three years or you're not working an opportunity there isn't anything to tell you to trigger you to do that well crm if you if you have everybody set up with that with a future activity you're, you're in good shape you now have a handle on everything that's going on with all of your accounts 
So we have a fair amount of customers who will run this report periodically just to make sure no one has fallen through the cracks. So that's one way of tracking accounts. Another way, if I jump back to that uh, account screen, I'll just maybe pull up a different account this time. I could do a global search to find one, or I can do a search right here within the account screen. So I'm just gonna pull up an account that I know has something in it. So one of the things that we've also added to help you track your, your customers is after a while, you're gonna get used to a customer's buying pattern, right? You know your customers, you have, you have access, we actually have access to invoice data. So you're gonna get a sense, does this customer order every three days, every week, every month, every quarter? And once you kind of see a trend with a, with a customer, you can go in here and enter approximately how many days is it between orders? So if this customer orders about every four weeks, I'd, in this case, I'd enter like 30 days. So what is this gonna do? Our system, our CRM is tied into your back office. That's the way it works. And so we know when this customer's buying and basically when he stopped buying, so to speak, based on now we have this. So if you enter this for your key accounts or maybe even all your accounts, how many days each one is between orders, because they could be different for each customer, then maybe once or twice a week, you go into one of our dashboards and you'll see how bad a shape I'm in right now. I should, if I was a salesperson, I'd probably be in big time trouble because this is just test data, but I can pull up a list and I'll just sort it here for you. I can pull up a list of accounts that are past their estimated days between orders. So here's that, here's that Fairview Manufacturing. I said they order approximately every 30 days. Well, they haven't ordered, they, they're actually 183 days beyond that. The last time they ordered was January of 2015, or uh, January 15th of 2017. So I'm, I'm in trouble with them. So the thought here is with, with real customer data, your, thought, your, your goal is for this dashboard to come up blank every week when you check it. But if, uh, if it doesn't come up blank, right, somebody just snuck in, it's like, wow, maybe you could make a quick call, find out what's going on, maybe, maybe there's con con construction by their site or business is slow or something's going on where, where you know, yep, you haven't lost them, but they just haven't ordered regularly. So really cool feature to help you track, track your accounts as well. All right, I'm just checking the clock and it looks like I'm right on schedule. So let's move into managing your accounts. I'm gonna sneak back to that account I was just on. I can just go to the recently viewed here. That's just another way to navigate here. So on this account screen, basic information about a customer, but now I, maybe I'm about to make, make a call to this customer, make a visit, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm analyzing this account before I do that. There's lots of information on this screen that can help you prepare yourself for the call. One of the things that's kind of helpful as I scroll down is you could bring over some AR information so you know if he's paying their bill and you know the, the last payment they made. So just some, some basic AR information. But another nice section is this, this 12 month summary of what they've been buying. So what this does is it, it summarizes everything by product. So there's only gonna be one line for every product and it's gonna sort it and show you the product they bought the most of down to the product they bought the least of. So just a quick way to see how big this customer is, what they've been buying, and then the last time they bought each of those products. You can see it looks like I loaded a lot of test data back in January. Um, but anyway, this is a really helpful screen to kind of get a sense for the account and what they've been doing. You can also, if you're a little bit more graphical, you can kind of look at that data um, on some charts. So this I think is a relatively new account over the last couple of years. So what this is doing is, is analyzing the gross profit this account produced this year to date versus last year to date. So you've got the chart and you've got the, the numbers. And then we also look at the most recent 12 months versus the prior 12 months. And then as I scroll down, we break down that data by what we call product segment. So how are they doing year to date? You know, on in this case, antifreeze, DEF, diesel, gas, grease, heavy duty. So you can kind of see, you know, if they're doing better or worse. And I've 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 picked gross profit, but I could also analyze revenue or or volume. It's just another tool to help you manage your account. 
I'll just grab one other one here. There's one that some folks think are kind of, thinks kind of nice. This one kind of does some quick trending for you. It looks at all the products, everything about this customer, and it just shows you quickly by month how much they bought of everything. So if I hover over, it'll just give me the, the volume number that was involved. And again, it looks like I loaded a whole lot of data back in uh, January. Got crazy there. And then it looks like, you know, this customer just stopped buying because they're down to zero, you know, you know, the last few months. But just a quick way to find out what's going on with this customer month over month. So those are uh, just some dashboards you can do if you're thinking of one account. Taking a step back, maybe you've got some time to analyze your overall book of business. So not one particular customer, you just want to see how maybe everybody's doing. What we, what we have here are just a number of reports that you can run. So let me make sure I grab the correct one here. So the first one I want to just pull up is, is what we call an account ranking report. And I will actually just get rid of a couple columns so it's a little bit easier to read and it fits on the screen a little bit better. Shall we take a second? All right, so this is an account ranking report. I could have run this for my book of business. I could have run this for a certain industry. I can select the data I want to produce this report. And, I, and I'll show you that filter screen in a minute, but I want to kind of show you the end result first. So this is a report that's very simple to run. Um, it actually produces a report right in Excel for you. So if you want to create some charts or do anything yourself or share it with somebody, it's, it's in Excel when you're all done, which is kind of nice. So I picked the time period and I said, I only want to look at my accounts. So it's a list of customers, basic customer information. And ultimately here, I, I told it to rank my customers by volume. So I'm going to get my best volume customer listed down to my worst volume customer. And then we have a running total of this volume. So it's basically just this plus this equals this, this plus this equals this. And then what percentage did they contribute of the total volume for that time period? What did each customer contribute? And then again, a running percentage. The reason we have this is a lot of our clients want to see their top 80%. Well, this report is going to give you everybody. If you only want to see the top 80%, just scroll down. And when you get to 80%, you know, everything above this line meets, uh, you know, fulfills the 80% of your business. It's basically on one, one screen there, one, one page. So kind of a nice report. You can see which, uh, which are your big accounts, you know, how things are going with those if you want to analyze them. And again, you can, you can filter on department. If you have maybe fuel and lubes business, you only want to rank the, the lubricant business. You can, you can filter on that, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so that's one report. I'm just going to grab a couple other ones here, just another way to manage your accounts. Um, we have some comparison reports, with our, which are very nice to help you um, see if, if things are going up or down. So again, I'm, I'm a list of accounts. I'll just kind of scroll this over this time. So what is this doing? This is going to give me an opportunity to pick two time periods, and it's going to show me the current time period, the prior time period that I picked, and then the variance amount. And again, I, I picked this for volume. Let me just scroll over a little bit. So I picked volume, and I said compare 2016 to 2015. Basically, I picked two full years. So when I did that, it produced this report in Excel again for me. Current period, prior period, the variance amount, the variance percentage. If I wanted to sort this by varied percentage, right, it's just Excel. So I could just you know, go into highlight what I wanted, sort it by the variance percentage. Um, what we also did, because folks love this report and they said, it's great. Could you give me just like the last few months of trending for the period I picked? So I picked a 12-month period. This is showing me the last three months of the period I protect. I, I selected for the current period and then the last three months of what I picked for the prior period. So, you know, if you don't care about those numbers, fine, but we have current period, prior period, and the variance. So one of the things that also jumps out at me could be as I'm analyzing this is maybe I get a lot of variances because that, that are really outrageously positive because it includes new customers, right? They didn't buy anything last year and they bought all this stuff this year. Well, guess what? I could go back and rerun this report and say, only show me customers with a start date, maybe before January of 2014, right? Because I was looking at 15 and 16. I don't want anybody who started in 15 because it's just going to maybe, maybe not started in 16, right? So you can just 
I could do that in Excel, I could filter them out here, or I could have done it when I ran the report. So what other reports might we care about? Maybe you wanna analyze products for maybe a specific account. This is actually what this report was designed for. I picked uh, an account, I picked uh, like an end date, I picked January of 2017, and I said, show me all the products they buy and how much they bought each month, and then there's totals for those 13 months, and then there's there's uh, there's totals for each month, you know, for every product combined. So this report was designed to analyze a customer, but once we rolled this out, then people started getting real creative, and they would run this report, and they wouldn't even select a customer. They would run it for their whole organization, show me every product in our whole company, and show me how much we sold, basically how much customers bought for each month, because the report is always going to list one line for every product. So you can be real creative here. If I just want to care about one salesman, how much did a particular salesman sell? Um, I could just filter on a salesperson, not a customer. Again, you're going to get one line per product with all these numbers. And I could have ran this report for volume, for gross profit, or for revenue. We always give you those three choices. All right, one more uh, real quick, and then we'll move on to growing your account. So one other report you might want to use to... Uh, Analyze your customers is one more variance report. Let me see if I can find it here. So it looks like this one right here. So here's an account product variance report. This takes it to the to the to the, almost to the next level. So I picked two time periods again, and I just picked my accounts. But what it lists is every customer. I'll just kind of highlight some here. Well, not going to highlight them because I don't have it edited. Um, so every customer and then the products this customer bought over the time periods I picked, and it's showing me all three buckets, right? Volume, gross profit, and revenue, how much they bought in the current period, the prior period, and the variance. So I can see variances um, for volume, gross profit, and revenue for every one of my products, for every one of my accounts, and then there's even a total for that account. So... Really nice way to analyze your reports. Um, all these reports are done. Once we get the system up and running and your data is in here from, your, from all of our configuration, all of our setup, and we're tied into your back office, all these reports just, just come to life. All right, so that's uh, managing your accounts. Let's talk, about, let's talk about growing your account. So what's one way to grow your account base? And I'm talking about trying to get more business from your existing customers. So it started out with something as simple as a report, and then we even made it even better. So what we did is we created a report where, again, you pick the time period, but you pick the pro what we call product segments to analyze. So things like, in this particular example, I said analyze additives, antifreeze, grease, and my heavy duty lines. So why did I do that? So in my make-believe world here, customers that typically buy one of these product segments typically buy from the other ones. That's just the way our customers line up. And it may not be accurate, but I'm sure you have some product lines where if somebody buys one, they probably buy some other ones as well. So when you run this report, you pick the product segments you care about. And then we just go through and based on the time period you picked, we grab all the accounts, add up all the, in this case, I picked gross profit, but I could have picked volume. You know, so how much gross profit did we get from each of these product lines for each of these customers? And if what I said was true, you know, maybe uh, this A&P Auto that I have highlighted, they buy a lot of anti additives, antifreeze and grease, but they're not buying any of our heavy duty stuff. Maybe the next time I'm talking to them, I could ask them about their, you know, what they're doing, where they're getting their heavy duty oil from and talk to them about that. So this is just an easy report to analyze all your accounts, um, to get those numbers. Again, you're looking at it more from a book of business perspective. You're not looking at it from just one account. You're just trying to find a way to grow your business. You could run this report and start doing some analysis. So this was great, but then we tried taking this to the next level. So what we decided to do was, if I can flip over to CRM here, and I'll just go back to this main form, even though I probably didn't have to, but just to show you where I'm at, I'm, I'm at looking at this customer again. So what we did is we tried to take that report 
and apply it right to a specific customer. So I'm looking at Fairview Manufacturing, I'm analyzing this account, you know, I've looked at all the things I've, I showed you earlier. We added this button here called Suggestive Sell. So I'm gonna hit that button and see what happens. What that's gonna do is open up a window, and look at this, it gave me a list of product segments, additives and automotive. So what it did by hitting that button is it looked at all the product segments this customer's buying, it looked at all the product segments it's not buying, and then it looked at a little matrix that you're in charge of setting up, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, and that matrix is that relationship again between your product lines, between your product segments, on how things line up. So if, again, if a customer buys X, they usually buy Y and Z. So you set up that matrix once, and now anytime you're looking at a customer, you can hit that button and it'll say, based on their buying patterns, here's some other things you might wanna to talk to them about. So just a great way to help you not have to analyze the data yourself, right? We just want you to be efficient, right? Hit a button, get some information. Hopefully it'll help you grow your business. So I wanted to just show you a couple things just real quick on like how you would set that up just to show you how simple it is. It's over in our little uh, setup area. You go into this suggestive cell configuration and ultimately it's just a matrix of this product segment lines up with this product segment. So if they buy antifreeze, you know, they probably buy additives. If they buy antifreeze, they also typically buy grease. Um, if they buy something in an automotive line, they usually buy grease. So this is just a combination of the, the product segments, the way, you know, whatever your product segments are, how they would line up. And just by filling this in, that's all you have to do is add a few records. Maybe you add, you know, 20 or 30 lines to this little table. When you're done, that, that suggestive sell button comes to life. So pretty powerful. The other thing I wanted to show you is how to run some of those reports, just so you get a sense of the simplicity of it. So that's in, uh, actually we put, we put this in our dashboard area per our customer's feedback. They said, we just want to be able to go in here. And they actually refer to it as, you know, dashboard 97, where you can actually request a report. So you pretty much pick the report. All those things I showed you are on this list. So I'll just grab this account ranking report. And it gives you all your choices. Remember I talked about gross profit, revenue or volume, you can pick one of those. A range of dates is ultimately all that's required on this one. And I could scroll all the way down to the bottom and say submit this report, but if I only wanted, let's say Dean's accounts, I don't wanna analyze everybody or rank everybody's, I just want Dean's or I want Dean's and Brad's. I could just pick them. These are a list of all your salespeople, your, your users. If I only wanted to rank my accounts based on the industry they're in, I could do that. Um, I'll just scroll down some, some other popular ones. Um, here's where I can kind of eliminate some of the data. If I have multiple departments set up in CRM, maybe I only want to rank all my lubricant business, my lubricants accounts. Maybe I only want to care about a certain product segment or a couple product segments and see you know, my big customers, my big antifreeze customers. I mean, what a great way to do that. Just go run this ranking report. I only want antifreeze. You're going to get a list of all the customers who buy antifreeze, the biggest one down to the smallest one. That's all you do when you're done checking your boxes, you hit request report, and in a couple minutes you get an email, and that email has your spreadsheet attached and you're all set. So what's really nice is you could run this, you know, and submit it, and then uncheck this one, and maybe check this, and request another one, and boom, just quickly run like five, six different things you wanna analyze, and in a few minutes you're, you get a few emails with your spreadsheets and you're all set. So I'm checking the clock, I'm checking my list. I think I have covered everything that I wanted to cover, so I am gonna see if I can flip this back over to Chad and get back to the PowerPoint. Oops, that's not it. <laughs> Here we go, so Chad, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, a lot of great information in an extremely short amount of time. Uh, if anybody has has talked to Steve before, he can talk about CRM for hours and hours, and this was really just a, a quick highlight of, of what you can do with the product. So from, from a, a Let You Partner standpoint, if anyone's not familiar with us, we, uh, do, we're business advisors and technology consultants focused on Microsoft Dynamics and, and Salesforce, and, and really we offer a full range of services from an analysis and audits and implementations, uh, 
training, support, kind of the whole gamut, and we know the oil and gas industry extremely well. So uh, check us out. We're going to be following this up with, with an email that's going to contain more information. Uh, we've got a lot of resources on our website at ledupartners.com, including ebooks, on demand videos, and case studies that you see here from uh, industry peers that you have as well. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, Jean is going to be the, the one following up with you. So I encourage you to take her call. And, and really, the best way to do this is, uh, again, you just saw a glimpse of what you what, uh, today of what the product can do, uh, not only for your for your business, but uh, Steve would be more than happy to take a deep dive, deep dive with you, and Gene's the one that'll really set that up and be able to answer your questions as well. So if you have any questions, but in the meantime, feel free to get a hold of us at any of those contact information below. I want to thank you for joining us today, and have a fantastic week.